plenty of T20. You got T20 now. You got T20 World Cup, and then you got T20 IPL again in April May. How much T20 do you want? We had about 10 p.m. It came out the night before saying game's going to go ahead as usual. The next day comes about. Fans are travelling to the ground. They get there. Game's off. And we'll be disappointed because in the games they lost, there were moments in those games where they could have could have grabbed the game by the scruff of the neck. Explain what the new who the new audience are. DJs, cheer ladies. I think that that situation was very, very badly dealt with. We can sit and argue the rights and wrongs of why it was and wasn't called off for ages and ages, and we've all heard those arguments. Do you not think that, yeah, IPL, five days later, maybe we're going to call the game off? And welcome to another First Class Cricket Academy podcast. In this podcast today, we're going to be looking over a pretty sour end to what's been a pretty good series. You could probably say India were the better side out of it, but England, they would could have argued they could have maybe drawn the series. Um, but it was a bit unlucky for them because as in these times, COVID hit and unfortunately that, that match couldn't be played. So Raj, what were your thoughts on that game being called off? I think it was uh, disappointing, definitely. Um, A, from an Indian perspective, that it would have been a good opportunity to have finished the series 3-1. And I'm disappointed for James Anderson because it would have been a great opportunity for him to uh, finish on his home ground and especially the kind of bowler he is. I think he missed out on that opportunity. And uh, also the entire cricket loving public missed out on the final finale, as you can call it. But things were really out of control. So, you know, in COVID times, I don't think you can blame anyone for it as well. Darren, the game was... On, on the news, they, the game was said it was going ahead about 10 p.m. It came out the night before saying game's going to go ahead as usual. The next day comes about, fans are travelling to the ground, they get there, game's off. Do you not think that's a bit poor from, who, who, well, I suppose, poor from whoever called the game off? Maybe you should have called it off the night before, not the morning off the game. Yeah, I think that, that situation was very, very badly dealt with. We can sit and argue the rights and wrongs of why it was and wasn't called off for ages and ages and we've all heard those arguments on the telly in the last couple of days but yeah for because if I was going and I'd have heard that and it was all over the news that there were no there were no positive tests in the Indian playing camp on the the um the night before the Thursday night I think it was I would have taken from that that okay we're going ahead then obviously the game was not called off the Indians never called it off because players had it. It was a fear of they might catch it. And I think the fact that the um, reserve physio, both physios were positive, which left them without a physio for the game as well. So, yeah, I, I mean, I'm not going to stay and sit here and spout the rights and wrongs of why it was and wasn't called off. I mean, I think it's fairly obvious that if there wasn't an IPL next week, we probably would be watching a game of cricket now. But, you know, that's... That's the way the that's the way cricket is now. So, um, yeah, I just think it, the whole thing was very, very badly dealt with. Raj, money talks, doesn't it? Yeah, money definitely talks, but I don't think uh, no one still knows what actually transpired, and there's a lot of hush hush still going on. So we don't know what has actually happened, and. Uh, uh, the financial losses, I think, will be made up next year. But uh, as far as the cricket-loving public goes, obviously, um, we all were looking forward to that final encounter. And uh, we all missed it. But Raj, do you think it was about the contracts, about the big contracts, IPL contracts, an IPL gig, getting a lot of money. Players thought, you know what, I don't want to be ill, which is fair enough, no one wants to be ill. But they're all double-jabbed. 
is it all? It, do you think they should have at least given it a go and got a physio in? There's plenty of physios, physios around England they could have got in for that test series. Do you not think that, yeah, IPL, five days later, maybe we've got to call the game off? Uh, I have no answer, but I think they all panicked because of the... And uh, I think the worst thing for them is staying in this bubbles and uh, quarantine. I think that is what they dreaded most, that if they caught it, they had to quarantine again for... 10 days and then go and quarantine for six days there. Uh, I think the quarantine is what actually um, turned the tables. Mm. But no one wants to do that. And these guys have been in quarantine for quite some time. Darren, we'll come on to the second controversial topic of, of, how, of how the result is going to be actually made. Well, you could probably give me many many reasons of why England should have won and why India should have won or maybe no one wins, it's just a draw and India take the trophy home, which they are doing anyway, but they win the series. What do you think could have, what sort of result do you think could happen for the series? Could they come and play next year? Could they or they'll all just or relax it now, get a result now, finish it there? There's, there's no perfect answer to this, I don't think. I mean, there's talk of India are over here for some white ball cricket next year. Talk, there's talk of playing the test then, fitting it in at some point obviously the situation will be different then there'll be different players playing for India and players who are in there now who won't be there and the same for England probably um, hopefully in some cases but um, yeah it's it's a tough one there's like I say there's no obvious answer I just hope I mean it's difficult now with the fitting games in anywhere because uh, the season is just so crowded and um, I just hope it it actually is ended up on the field of play and it doesn't end up in a court somewhere with the ECB suing the BCCI or vice versa, which I don't think they will do because um, because they just won't do that to the BCCI. And, um, yeah, I, it, there's no obvious answer. I mean, if they end up playing it next year, they end up playing it next year. And I think the big, the big issue is it's not who wins the series and who doesn't. It's the um, Test Championship points, isn't it? That's why England want to play this last game. And, yeah, I mean, India have the momentum and would would they have won this one? Possibly, maybe, probably. They certainly would have been favourites. But then they would have been favourites after Lords as well. I couldn't see England winning the next test the way the Lords one went, but they turned that round and won that one. So, who knows? Raj, how do you think the results should have been determined? Play it next year? I don't think it is going to be a continuation of this one. It is going to be a one-off test match like that because um, you just can't prolong a series for a year. Uh, I think it will be a one-off test match and uh, they got to make sure that the losses the boards have incurred, uh, whether it is ECB, whether it is Lancashire, that is all made up. And uh, I think that is a moral duty as well to make that up. Raj, I don't know if you can answer this question, but do you reckon it was ECB calling that game off or BCCI calling that game off? I have no idea. I think both of them had to come to a point where they agreed to call the game off. But who uh, did what? I have no idea. And I think the media has... um, not the media make guesses but as public we need to be able to find that out we should find that out and I think it will come out after some time though it might not come out now but I'm sure it will come out in the near future what actually transpired Hmm. so Raj would you say play a test match next year a one-off test match I think it will be a one-off test match next year. Would you personally want that to happen? I would rather have a test match, substituting a test match, because there are talks that... Um, Two T20s or something. T20s. I mean, I don't think. Well, 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 any well, T20s. Well, they'll also want to play a T20 next week in the IPL, so yeah. they'll get their T20 then. Yeah. And they'll get a lot of money for it. You got plenty of T20. You got T20 now. You got T20 World Cup, and then you got T20 IPL again in April, May. How much T20 do you want? Hmm. It's like I like curry, but if you have curry morning, evening, night, 
365 days. Ooh. You're going to be sick of it. <laughs> and if something is very predictable, like T20 cricket is, T20 cricket doesn't have the, you know, the, what do you call it? excitement, the changes that happens in test match cricket. T20 cricket is very, very predictable, especially for people who understand the game. For people who don't, it's completely different. They find it very exciting. But um, T20 cricket doesn't have the finesse and the excitement of test cricket. The duel between Kohli and Anderson, right? Or say the duel between the England Seamers and Rohit Sharma is completely different. That is very difficult for this new audience to understand. Okay? That doesn't happen. Raj, can you explain what the new, who the new audience are? Oh, new audience is someone who comes to the ground for banners, four, sixes, DJs, cheer ladies, right, drink, but have no idea about what an over is. They are the new audience. Well, Raj, the right. format could go into an international format. You never know. Oh, I hope I don't live to see that. <laughs> right. We'll come away from COVID. Um, now, we'll just start the series. Darren, India played, you could probably argue, much better cricket than England did. Yeah. But, yes... I'm not going to argue with that. England will be disappointed because in the games they lost, there were moments in those games where they could have could have grabbed the game by the scruff of the neck. But I think India played the majority of the... I mean, the coaches will tell you about this and international coaches, the big moments and the big sessions. That's what teams look to win. And I think India won the majority of those, which is why they had players like who could turn a session on their own, like Jasprit Bumrah, like Rohit Sharma, like, and, and some of their tail end runs as well, which made a massive difference in the two games they won. Raj, if England called up Darren Milan and Chris Wokes earlier, could that series have been very di- and, uh, and Hamid, could that series have been very different to what it was at the end of it? It could have been. I think one of the positives for England was that as the series went by, they got a better team, they got better players, more suited for test cricket, rather than what they were trying in the start of it. Now, one thing is quite obvious. In the shorter format, right, Afghanistan can go and upset India. Afghanistan can go and upset Australia. Um, You know, Bangladesh can go and beat England in T20 or in a 50-over game or even so in the 16.4 if that happens. But very, very rarely will you see that in the longer format, right, the favourite losing. Mm. Very rarely does that happen. And that is because in a team which is a favourite in a test match, you have got players who are gun players who can handle the pressure. Right? Mm. And so it three fail, there will be someone in that side who's going to bail that side up. But in a shorter format, it doesn't work like that. The, you know, the underdog can always go and win a shorter format game. But it's very difficult for the underdog to upset a strong side in the longer format. Darren, you could probably argue England have probably found their well, I would like to st- say they have found their top three, top four for the Ashes, would you say? Yeah, I think Raj is exactly right. And I think it England have stumbled on to a side that can compete with Australia in Australia, depending on how we play the fast ball, the, the bouncing ball. We've got, to, I mean, there's, there's a few there I'm not so sure of. I mean, there's a lot of people saying how well Bairstow's batted. Bairstow averaged less than 30. Played all four tests, never got a score above. I think, can't remember. I, I did write something down earlier. Yeah, he, he got 150, so he's not actually. Darren, who would you have in your made... team, Besto or Ollie Pope? Oh, Ollie Pope. 
Oli, they're not. It's it's not a like for like as far as I'm concerned. I think the question is, Oli Pope is always in the side. I think. I think you've got to stick with him, even if he fails occasionally. The same with Hamid, because they are Test batsmen. They have temperaments and techniques for Test cricket. Mm. My like for like would be Bairstow or Folks, and I would pick Folks because I think he's a better wicket keeper, and. He, I certainly don't think in Test cricket he'll score any fewer runs than Johnny Bairstow would. Raj, anything to add before we wrap this up? No, I'll agree with Darren. Holly Pope should always be playing in this side. Hamid needs an extended run. I think Milan, they have brought him back now. Milan needs an extended run. I have no idea why Chris Walks didn't play the whole winter. He's one of your best all-rounders. And rotational policy, he, Raj. Rotational policy. Yeah. And um, I, interestingly, with this rotational policy, I read something, an interview of a gentleman called Kapil Dev, right? One of the top four all-rounders in the world during his time, other than Imran Khani and Botham and uh, Sir Richard Hadley, so in Botham. And Kapil Dev played 60 test matches on the trot. In those days, there was no T20, right? 60 test matches he played on the trot. And he missed one, because not because of injury, but some other reason. And then he went on to play 100-odd test matches. I don't know exact number, but it was more than 100. And he was playing the one-day uh, uh, stuff as well. Never got injured. He bowled on docile Indian pitches for most of his career. And he was bowling 35, 40 overs. And he comes up in an interview and he said, if you grow up to be a four over bowler, you are going to get injured. If you want to stay fit, you have to bowl more because your bowling muscles need to become strong. What you do in the gym does not strengthen your bowling muscles. Yeah, you like a bay watch, you have a bay watch body, but what you really need to do is bowl and run on the ground on soft surface, not on hard surfaces. And I've heard before from people like Michael Holding, Andy Roberts, and they were not bad bowlers, I'm sure you know about them. And they say exactly the same. So all this SNC that goes on, yes, it's fantastic. But when you see the balance sheet, there are more players getting injured or play one test match, two test matches, then they're done. When people like the couple of Dave's Bothams, they played regularly. They played county cricket they played test matches. They were bowling 30 overs in county cricket. They were going and bowling in test matches. They didn't get injured, by the way. Just making a point. But now you've got all this s and gymming, everything, but less bowling. So Darren Goff was saying that on the radio the other day. He's saying the difference between bowling fitness and gym fitness is massive. It's, it's completely you know, It's different. the same as he just yeah, bowling a three-day game for Yorkshire and go off and play for England three days later in a five-day test match. He said if, if he was bowling against Australia, he'd be bowling for three and a half of those days, didn't he? So. Oh. So. Well then, guys, I think we'll finish that there. So all I can say is thank you to you both for covering what's been a pretty sour, a sour end to the series, but there's been definitely some very good cricket that has been played from both sides, but most probably more towards India. Um, all I can say is now we will be back Please subscribe before I say anything else. Please subscribe. It helps us out. Really, it really does help us out. If we can try and get to 1K subscribers, that would be awesome. We will be releasing some other content about coaching stuff, but our next review will be the T20 World Cup, and here's what to come. Thanks for listening. Thank mm-hmm. you.